Hi, this is Jack Dalton. I'm traveling around the world again. Today I'm in China, outside the city of, of uh, Beijing, the capital city, about 50 kilometers southwest of there, near the village of Jokudian. And Jokudian is famous because it's near here, at a limestone quarry, where the famous Peking Man fossils were discovered in the 1920s. In fact, I'm standing right below the site where in 1929, a very well-preserved cranium of an early proto-human was discovered. This was very important because this is the first fossil remain of earlier proto-humans, specifically Homo erectus, discovered in East Asia, discovered in, in China. And it really established conclusively that earlier proto-humans, hominids, had arrived or had been present in Asia. Uh, something that was not formally well documented or understood. This site, as I've said, is uh, a limestone quarry. In the uh, late 19th, early 20th century, as workers were excavating limestone here, fossil remains began to be discovered, specifically fossil remains of extinct uh, mammals, dating from about, as we now know, from about 300 to 750,000 years ago. These fossils of uh, fossilized mammals were believed to be the fossils of dragons. Hence, this area is known as Dragon Bone Hill. Those fossils were taken to apothecaries in Beijing, then known popularly as Peking. Uh, and these uh, apothecaries would sell them for traditional ingredients for traditional medicines. Well, these bones uh, present in the apothecaries of Peking came to the attention of Western scientists geologists who were in the area, and specifically a Swedish geologist, John Anders Anderson, learned about these uh, fossilized bones and where they came from, and he then ventured forth to this site, this limestone quarry near the village of Jokudian, to, to do excavations, scientific excavations, with an assistant. If we move over in this direction, we can see the cave area in this limestone quarry where John Anderson and his assistant began their excavations in about 1921. Very quickly, John Anderson's assistant found some fragment, fragmentary remains which he believed were hominid or proto-human, specifically some teeth, molars, and other fragments. Several years later, a Western anatomist confirmed that these were a species of hominid, uh, proto or early humans and he assigned a new taxon to these findings, which we now know as Homo erectus. And they've been dated to about 500,000 years ago. These, this discovery was very important, as I've said, because it finally established that early humans or proto-humans were present in Asia. In 1891, the anthropologist Dubois had discovered what he believed were fossilized proto-human or hominid remains on the island of Java, the famous Java Man. But the remains were too scant, too fragmentary to be accepted generally by the scientific community. Although Dubois believed strongly that they were a new species of earlier proto-human, human, it was not accepted by the scientific community. However, the findings at this site, the Peking Man site in the 1920s, could corroborate what Dubois had discovered, the findings of Dubois, and firmly established that earlier proto-humans had been present in East Asia. And for that reason, this site is extremely important in the history, in the history of paleoanthropology. Excavations at this limestone quarry continued by paleoanthropologists for the rest of the early 20th century until the start of World War I, or excuse me, World War II. In 1941, after the Japanese had invaded China and taken Beijing, the, the Peking man fossils were collected, gathered up, and packed carefully, entrusted to the custody of U.S. Marines for transport out of the country of China to the safety of the U.S., uh, not, not wanting them to fall into the hands of the Japanese. Unfortunately, during that transport, at some point, the fossils were lost. And the present whereabouts of the Peking man fossils, including the largely intact cranium, uh, is un are unknown at this time. The whereabouts is unknown at this time. And s people have been investigating the disappearance of the Peking man fossils periodically 
uh, after the conclusion of World War II, but to no avail. The present whereabouts are still uh, a mystery, and it's one of the greatest mysteries in the history of paleoanthropology. Fortunately, plaster casts were made of the Peking man fossils before they were packed up and traded and subsequently lost. So these casts were still available for, for scientists to study, uh, for, to study as they, uh, even in the absence of the, of the fossil remains themselves. And so the loss is, is somewhat mitigated by that fact. Also, in the, in the decades since the discovery of the Peking Man fossils, there have, of course, been other spectacular finds around the world of uh, hominids, proto-humans, and these have somewhat superseded the significance of the finds at the Peking Man site here. Um, these fossils, though, the Peking Man fossils and other fossil discoveries in China continue to be the subject of debate and interest in the scientific community. As, uh, as the issues of how early, early, how early hominids or proto-humans were present in Asia continues to be debated, and the evolution of proto-humans into Homo sapiens in, in Asia also continues to be a subject of great discussion and scholarly debate. So it's fantastic to be at this site today. There are virtually no other tourists here today. Uh, I think um, any armchair paleoanthropologist, in fact, any educated person in the Western world has heard of the famous Peking Man fossils. And to be here today at the site where they were discovered, this limestone quarry in the cave before us, known as Locality One, number one, is quite fantastic. It's a privilege and, and, and an exciting, uh, a, an exciting um, place to be for me in particular, as I've visited early human sites all over the world in the past five to ten years. Anyway, I'm going back to uh, Beijing now with my trusty companion, Roz Ho, who's doing this videotaping. And instead of exploring human remains from 500,000 years ago, we're going to District 798, which is, the, which is the center of the focus of the contemporary art scene in modern China. Thank you very much. <laughs>